It is May of 2024, and for most, including myself, the spring semester is coming to a close. If you're a senior in high school, you're probably graduating now. Congrats, Colin and Zaley, you guys did it! The weather is getting so hot it sounds like an Ava episode outside, and free comic book day came and went. So yeah, we have a lot of comics to cover in this episode, but before we get to the free comic book day stuff, let's talk about Marvel's newest crossover event, Blood Hunt. I dig the cover and logo for this. Wow, what an issue. I loved it, I thought it was great. The art was fantastic, the writing is- oh, spoilers by the way, if, in case it wasn't obvious. The writing is charming, has an understanding of the characters it's utilizing, and full of surprises. Having vampires in the Marvel Universe has always been one of those things where, as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's been underutilized, and for a good reason. I mean, what the fuck is Dracula doing in a Spider-Man comic? But they're finally taking that concept and going nuts with it. Vampires are spreading around like the plague all over the world. It reminds me of the Marvel Zombies Dead Days comic I covered. I am so happy I'm not a civilian in the 616 universe. I'm super interested to see what the repercussions of something like this will be as we move forward. Probably nothing because this is comics, but I digress. Why is Blade evil? I thought he was supposed to be cool! I love Doctor Strange's characterization in this. When he talks about casting a spell to kill all the vampires on Earth, including the good ones, comparing it to removing a limb to save a patient. That's some good ass writing right there, dog. That's some good ass writing. Um, what the fuck happened to Spider-Man? We see Miles for a little bit, and then Blade shows up to ask him for a favor, and that's the last we see of him. What did you do to my boy Miles? I swear to God, Blade. Let me stop yapping. Overall, Blood Hunt was a great issue, and you should all check it out. I think I'll give it a 10 out of 10. Check it out if you haven't already. Alright, now let's do a rundown on all the free comic book day issues I got, starting with... The first DC comic I'm covering on this channel, Absolute Power is the next big crossover event happening on the other side of town, where Amanda Waller teams up with the recently created villain Failsafe to basically enslave all the superheroes. The comic does a good job at setting all this up as everything I just explained 5 seconds ago I knew nothing about before reading this comic. Brainiac's also gonna be involved by the looks of it. I don't think I'll be picking up Absolute Power when it drops, but hey, hope it's fun. Maybe I'll read it uh, after it's complete. It's time for Halloween! <laughs> don't come to my house or else I'll suck your dick! <laughs> blood! I'll suck your blood! <laughs> Half of this comic is about Blood Hunt, and it's a damn good free comic book day issue. Nothing major is revealed, but we get to see where characters from the Marvel Universe uh, we didn't see in Blood Hunt issue 1 were doing when the vampire outbreak started. I love how out of it Spidey is, and the writing for Daredevil scene is quite haunting as when the Dark Force Dimension portals first start showing up, his radar senses can't decipher what's happening. Oh, and Dracula shows up too. The other half is a story setting up the new X-Men era, and it was also pretty good. I won't lie, I know literally nothing about Krakoa era X-Men, so I don't know at all what led to this, but looks like the X-Mansion is being rebuilt. The comic is a fun little story about Jubilee deciding to join the X-Men again, followed by build up to Inmate X. Again, I have no idea what's going on in current X-Men comics, but I'm guessing it's Professor X in there. We'll see, I guess. Also, how many times are characters in the Marvel Universe gonna do this hand motion, okay? First we got Spider-Man who does it when he flips, and we also got magic users who do this, and now it also means mutants? Come on. Um, yeah, this is the best one so far. Story 1 is about Megatron, and it's drawn by freaking Ryan Otley! Holy shit, it's so cool! Ryan Otley's art is so amazing, he draws Megatron like a fucking badass. Braun gets killed, but I didn't even mind, cause it just looks so cool! If a flashback story on how Megatron landed on Earth drawn by Ryan Otley wasn't cool enough, we also get a flash forward where Megatron fights, uh... his captors? Are, are these G.I. Joe guys? Blinded and missing an arm, Megatron frees himself and swears revenge on Starscream. Uh... Who's gonna tell him? 
The next story is Void Rivals, and holy shit, Hot Rod's here. Hot Rod gets help looking for intel on a friend who's gone missing. Could it be Springer? Since I know he's on a Void Rivals cover. Anyways, this one was also cool. It's so surreal seeing aliens from the G1 cartoon make a comeback in comics written by Robert fucking Kirkman. I like that Hot Rod calls them kids. <laughs> Skuxoid has a wife and kids. The last story is about G.I. Joe, and I don't have much to say besides the art is fucking gorgeous. Hold on guys, maybe G.I. Joe is actually kind of fire. No, but in all seriousness, it was good, and I'm giving serious consideration to read the rest of the Energon universe. Last up on the list of free comic book day issues is Half Amazing Spider-Man, and I didn't read it. It's written by Zeb, world's most divorced comic writer, Wells, and it looks stupid. I ain't reading all that. Thankfully though, the later half of this comic is about the Ultimates. Captain America, who's now unfrozen, Iron Lad, and Doctor Doom, who I'm pretty sure is Reed Richards, break into a secret storage facility, uh, carrying pretty much the capes and corpses of all the superheroes that never were in this universe. Is that Black Bolt as a kid? Dead? How the hell did they manage to kill the Sentry? Anyways, Hand Agents, which are like the secret police force of the Maker, show up to fight. And we get this really cool moment where Cap uses some beer to reignite Jim Hammond, the original Human Torch. The first issue of The Ultimates drops in June, and I'll definitely be picking it up, so stay tuned for that. And there's this little Venom thing at the end, but I don't know, I'm not reading Venom. Okay, those were all the free comic book day issues. How about we just chill out for a second and talk about Transformers issue 8. For starters, I gotta say it's a really nice cover, beautiful art. Um, I know I was really hard on last issue, but... I actually really like this one. The art in this is really dope, even though it's not DJW. Alita 1 shows compassion here, so she's already better than IDW Alita 1. Speaking of, holy shit, Ultra Magnus is alive? I can already see this panel as a thumbnail in a YouTube video called, Here's 5 times Transformers went dark. Skyfire is back, not 100%, but he can speak now, he's stuck in his vehicle mode though. A new character we get here is Astro Train. One thing I really find interesting about the Astro Train scene is that Megatron clearly did him dirty somehow and he wants revenge. Soundwave promises that while they don't know Megatron's current location, when they do find Megatron, Astro Train can do whatever he pleases with him. What surprised me is how willing Soundwave was to hand over Megatron like that to Astro Train, since he's usually the one who's always super loyal to Megatron. I'm down for this new interpretation of Soundwave that'll actually fight back against Megatron if that's what's gonna happen. Okay, so last issue I was kinda bitching and moaning about the setup with those navy soldiers, but they all get taken care of in this issue, so that's good. I thought it was gonna be a whole thing for an arc. I'm sorry, I was wrong. The best moment in this comic though, if you've read this, you already know what I'm gonna say. After Skyfire is brought back, Optimus is about to walk out, but Skyfire asks him to stay. He says it's so dark and lonely for him. Optimus obliges him and decides to just sit with Skyfire for a while. When this comic first came out, I posted the panel on Instagram and it kinda blew up. A lot of people in the comments too were professing their love for this series so far, so... These comments can do a better job at explaining the love for this comic book than I can, so might as well read some of them out loud. This whole issue nearly made me cry. This and Ultra Magnus. Dude has an avalanche of shit to tend to before the Decepticon strike again, but dude still has time to comfort a friend in distress? That's one of the many reasons I love this series. This page. The way as Jetfire realizes his fate, the background gets darker. The light's starting to come back as Optimus sits. It's chillingly cruel and oddly wholesome at the same time. You gotta be the best comic Optimus Prime if you think we fucking. Yeah, so overall it was a nice issue. Um, the art was really cool and the Skyfire moment was nice, but to be honest, like, those were the main highlights. I'd give this issue a 7 out of 10. I hear soon we're getting a black and white issue. I'm really excited for that. Oh, and Shockwave shows up at the end. <gasps> I also read Spectacular Spider-Man. Another really solid entry in a really solid series so far. I love the way Wiseman writes. 
Like the beginning of this comic is executed greatly with you thinking Peter and Miles are talking to one another, but Miles is talking to his parents and Peter is talking with Gwen. Oh my god, Gwen's alive? Gotta say though, I'm really not a shipper of Miles and Kamala. Well, 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 look who it is. I was right after all. Who would have thought the character called Arcade was behind the Arcadium? I'm a genius! <laughs> The art is great as always, and I like how this comic has just gone insane with all its different perspectives. I'm giving Spectacular Spider-Man an 8 out of 10. Ultimate Spider-Man time! Oh my god, this issue is exactly what this series needed. Taken a page from the original USM by Bendis, Ultimate Spider-Man issue 5 says let's go back, let's go back, and we pretty much get an origin story for the Green Goblin. Hickman does a lot of work building Harry's character. We really get to see how proactive Harry is as the Green Goblin compared to Peter who's way more reactive as Spider-Man. Just a lot of world building in this issue which is very much appreciated. I was thinking midway through reading this that if Marvel were ever to do like a trade paperback best of Green Goblin specific issues like they did with Mary Jane, I think this would be a great issue to throw in there. Not a lot of Peter, but we do see him for a little and he has his moments. Overall, I would have liked to see more Peter and especially more Peter MJ. I mean the whole reason I'm buying this book is to see those two together which is severely lacking in this run so far. But alas, USM still has a lot of great world and character building, especially for Harry. The scene with Norman actually kinda hit. I too have a dad that's waiting for me to be better. On top of everything, it's just a damn memorable comic. During a stacked reading month like this, it can be easy to forget about the comics I'm talking about and then I have to go back and reread them before writing, but now with USM, I read it once and the whole thing stuck with me. 9 out of 10, good comic. Oh boy! Okay, that was everything I read that came out this month. Mm. What? I just got finished talking about USM, that was the last book I read. Mm. I'm telling you, I didn't read anything else that came out in May! Mm. Okay, I have a confession to make. I don't know how to say this, but I, I might have relapsed this month. And read the new Amazing Spider-Man. I, I, I saw some panels on TikTok and Instagram and they pushed me enough to give it a read. And honestly, it wasn't that bad, I guess. The art for the main story was beautiful, but I don't know. My soul is empty when it comes to Zeb Wells ASM. The little short stories at the end were pretty okay. My favorite one would have to be Time to Make the Donuts. Um, 5 out of 10, I guess. Probably like a 6 if we're being realistic, but I'm just being petty. Okay, and that's everything I read that came out this month. Thanks for watching all the way through, and I hope I see you for June's entry, where we'll definitely be covering less comics.